All right, welcome everyone to today's webinar, Using Hobbies and Interests to Support Your Local Community, presented by J.D. Isles with Hidden Landmarks Home Team at Keller Williams Realty. Many thanks to our presenter, J.D., for being with us today and to all the participants who have joined in and to our educational series sponsor, Shimon Canal Trust Company. Please note this webinar is being recorded to share what we learn with the business community and all attendees will receive the link to the recording. JD will share the presentation with you, then follow with time for questions and discussion. Please use the chat to submit any questions during the presentation. Just a reminder, when others are speaking, please keep your audio on mute to minimize background, background noise. With that said, I'll turn it over to JD to start things off. All right, so I am going to attempt to share my screen. Uh, so let's see how this goes. And if someone would let me know if you can see, um, basically using hobbies and interests to support your local community along with my business card, somebody give me a thumbs up. And also somebody give me a thumbs up if I'm coming through loud and clear. All right, fantastic. So, uh, so here we go. Um, what I'm gonna do here, so I'm going to go into slideshow format. All right. So first of all, I want to thank the chamber for asking me to do this. It's always very flattering when someone is paying attention to anything that I do. And some of you might know that I do a crazy show on Facebook every Friday at 9 a.m. Uh, about local history, mainly Elmira history, although I get out to other places as well. And a lot of people don't know, I've been doing that show for almost six years, which seems impossible. So the chamber wanted me to come and kind of talk about, you know, how did I start doing this and everything else? And could you kind of talk about something that'll help community and local businesses and everything else? So as I normally do, I made up a title and then later on, actually yesterday, I put together a presentation. So I've never done this specific presentation before, but it's probably going to go just fine. You don't want to hear that from your brain surgeon, but from me for this, it's going to be absolutely fine. We're all going to survive. Uh, so I am also a real estate agent with Keller Williams. I um, have something called the Hidden Landmarks Home Team. We sell real estate. But the thing I'm very well known for in the area is basically going out and standing in front of some historic site or in a museum on Facebook Live and talking about it and encouraging people that this is an amazing place to live and it's an amazing historically uh, important place to live. Um, and this whole Hidden Landmarks Facebook Live has become kind of a big passion project for me. So if you've ever watched me, thank you very much. I really, really appreciate it. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to attempt to inspire some of you. Um, and what I mean by that is, you know, we are all working jobs and it might be just a job. It might be a career you're at a certain place in your life, you're in a certain place with your job. And some people that are listening might say that everything is going great. My job couldn't be better. My life couldn't be better. I am all set. But there are always people out there that for one reason or another, they might be stuck in a little bit of a rut, or maybe they just think they're stuck in a rut. What I want to do is I want all of you to kind of think about, you know, not really your job or your career or your business, but I want you to think about your passions, your hobbies, your interests. And I want to talk about how you can use things that you're doing already and you love to support your local com community. So just to be really clear, if you're really into knitting, what we're really talking about is how can you use your love of knitting to 
benefit and support your local community because that's what I've done with the whole history thing. I'm also, because I'm a business person and I own a business, going to be talking about using this to engage future clients. And I know that some of you are in more of a volunteer capacity, et cetera, et cetera. So it's how to engage future clients or allies, you know, people that are not in your world yet, that if you had them in your world, they could kind of help you with whatever your job, career, or mission in life is. Um, so I'm going to give you three examples of people that have done exactly this in our community. And I think you're going to know at least two of them. So there's me, of course. I'm me right here talking to you. So unfortunately, you have to hear about what I've done. But Jim Pfeiffer is um, a name that most people in this region uh, recognize. So I'm going to talk about what he did first. And then I'm going to talk about an artist uh, named Philomena Jack. Um, if you don't know who she is now, because Facebook is listening to all of our conversations, I am sure she will show up in your Facebook feed in about 15 minutes. So don't worry, you're going to get to see plenty of her as well. But I'm going to give you a small amount of homework, very easy homework, that I'm going to let you guys knock out while you're listening to me. What I want you to do is, as I'm talking about these people and myself, I want you to pull out a piece of paper and start jotting down what your hobbies and interests actually are. So this can be something you just enjoy doing, or this is something that someday you want to build a career into it. You know, imagine if you're really into personal fitness and you work at a bank right now. Um, but someday you would love to be a personal trainer. Put that down on a list because we're going to talk about, you know, specifically taking these items on that list and maybe parlaying it into something else. So first, let's talk about Jim Pfeiffer. This is an actual, this is actually one of his humor columns. I didn't doctor this up at all. Uh, Jim Pfeiffer for many, many years was a newspaper reporter in Elmira working for the Star Gazette. He did a humor column, but he was also just a straight up newspaper reporter, did stories on this, that, and the other for decades. Um, but Jim Pfeiffer, just like everyone else, generally everyone has something that they enjoy doing more than their job. If you're not in this category, if you love your job more than anything, bless you, you can just sign out at this point. But generally people have things that they enjoy doing more than their job. And in Jim's case, it one of the things was kayaking or interacting with the river in some way, shape or form. And of course, we're talking about the Shimon River. Jim loves kayaking, loves canoeing, loves hiking, very, very passionate about nature, very, very passionate about the river. And I am sure that all of those things were true even in his early life and even when he was a um, reporter with the Star Gazette. When he resigned from the Star Gazette or retired, he decided, along with someone else, to start an organization that is very well known in this area. It goes by many names. It's all the same thing. Shimung River Friends, Friends of the Shimung River Watershed. It is all the same organization. But, you know, this is a perfect example of someone taking something that they're very, very passionate about and parlaying it into something greater. And I am sure that Jim didn't one day say, well, we're going to form this organization and we're going to have this much budget and, and, and here's all the money we need. Of course, he slowly ramped this up over time. 
this is a perfect example of someone taking something that they are very passionate about and you know the river friends still do all of these things but jim was one of the people that was instrumental in getting organized so that the organization did river cleanups um jim has extensively uh presented not only uh river specific presentations to schools but also just general knowledge nature presentations to schools um and he's done these types of educational events for adults as well now it was at the finger lakes house mostly for the adults and we were allowed to drink beer and wine but i'm sure the kids enjoyed it just as much um everyone knows that every year the river friends uh had um or have a flea market where people who own a kayak and they don't need it anymore or they want to maybe upgrade to a nicer kayak and they want to buy used this was a perfect type of event for the river enthusiasts in our community and the river friends also over the years and i don't know how many years i know it's at least 10 it's probably a lot more than that um they also organized organized trips down the river yeah. all of this quick note i got a um email back from uh all of this growing um out of one or two people's outside interests outside of work this happened very organically this happened over time and i know for a fact the entire southern tier twin tiers area benefited from jim pfeiffer's passion about nature passion about the river passion about kayaking and canoeing so there's example number one now as an aside Jim is also very passionate about bike riding. I have almost run Jim over several times uh, going to and from work. It is a normal occurrence. At least once a day, I, well, at least once a week, I get to say, you know, I could take him out right now if I wanted to. I never do. But Jim is always riding his bike. Jim could have done the bike thing. The passionate thing in his life that he moved moves into a larger organization or larger scope could have been the bikes he could have started teaching uh local classes about bikes and eventually parlayed it into you know friends of bikes as opposed to friends of the shimong river watershed so we all have these things in our life that could go on to this list and this list becomes the key to us spending more time doing the things that we like to do. And either we can get paid money for that, or we can get recognition, and all of us love recognition. We can get the satisfaction of helping other people. And sometimes, it can also bring us more business to our job, career, business, and, and even it can get additional help for any volunteer organizations that um, we, we help or run. So write down those hobbies and interests as I'm talking. And next, we're going to talk about Philomena Jack. So Philomena Jack is a local artist. She um, she currently lives in Elmira. Prior to that, she's a Jersey girl. Um, she was in the financial industry for many years um, in the tri-state area. And at one point, she just got to the point where she said, you know, I'm not getting everything I need out of this, the financial sector. I need to pursue my passion I want to build a career around art. And she has done that incredibly successfully. Um, she does a ton of, of things. 
So she does highly, she calls them highly inaccurate pet portraits. She does portraits of people's wedding bouquets, which I love. Um, she does a lot of murals, a lot of murals that many of you have probably seen around the Elmira area, tons and tons of murals. And all of these murals are commissioned and, and she actually gets pay, paid for painting these murals. That didn't happen overnight. This is an interest that she, she decided to put some time into. And most importantly, she started to push herself out into the community. So she became known and so that she could start getting commissions and opportunities to do murals publicly. As I said, lots and lots of murals. She does a number of things as well, you know, a lot of it being leveraged from social media. So, so Philomena, Philomena's model of taking a passion and moving it into a larger part of her life um, is heavily reliant on social media, as is mine. Jim, when Jim started doing things, there wasn't even social media when he started the River Friends. And, it, you know, Jim has only gotten into social media in a, in a big way in the last couple of years. But Philomena, you know, she was of the generation where, you know, uh, social media was always a thing. You know, here she is talking about a pop-up market that she's selling some of her art at. She teaches classes for a huge number of libraries in the area and also schools in the area. And of course, she's using social media to promote them. The library promotes them. The school promotes them. She promotes them online. And of course, everybody wins because she gets to do what she's truly passionate about and kids or, adu or adults come into closer contact with art, which is a win for everyone. Um, she did a class for the Yates County Art Center recently um, doing abstract paintings having to do with flowers. Um, and she's also very active in YouTube teaching classes on YouTube, getting herself out there, getting herself known and recognized so that she is able to teach more classes, able to do more murals, able to get more um, commissions. And again, it didn't happen overnight. She was not doing art full time. She was in the financial industry. She said, I wanna get to the point where I'm doing more and more art on a daily basis. And she slowly built towards that. Now, remember, she could have picked something she doesn't like doing, something that wasn't a hobby. That would not be a good pick. If you're doing work and you're not necessarily getting everything your soul needs through that job or career, please pick something that you enjoy doing as your side hustle, as your side gig, as your side area of interest. And one of the amazing things that has happened for Philomena is that she is delivering paintings to the Arnett Art Museum currently. This was back in just this past September. I assume it's either for the winter art market or maybe it's one of the exhibitions that they have in the North Hall, I think it is. So even the Arnett Art Museum is now fallen within her sphere. So I hope everybody is writing down those hobbies and interests that you think could help you get a little escape from work maybe eventually become your new career. But what I'm gonna talk about next is I'm gonna talk about my story and how I very intentionally said, I want to find something that I can talk about on a regular basis that will help me meet new people. And those people might one day become my real estate customers.
So I was very, very intentional. The last two case st studies, Jim Pfeiffer, Philomena Jack, um, they were they were very, very organic. I think they were less intentional. But what happens if you try to make it happen on purpose? Can that work out? So me, I was a real estate agent. I, I have a fantastic career now, but seven years ago, I was just starting out. And I was just starting out in an area where no one knew who I was. I was a complete transplant. And you know, we get to take a lot of classes as real estate agents. And there are always classes that are titled things like strategies that work for real estate agents starting out. And quite honestly, what this, act, and this sounds very hopeful. This sounds like, well, someone has a plan. Obviously, if I follow these strategies, I'm going to be a very successful real estate agent. This is like doing math. This is easy. What it actually feels like is this sad crying child, because the sad crying child has no idea if any of these strategies are going to work. And just so you get a glimpse into what real estate agents go through. So how do you get business as a brand new real estate agent? You know, the usual stuff, cold calling, which is basically calling people on the phone that don't want to talk to you, door knocking, which is even worse. You're going up to the doors of people, um, knocking on them and seeing if they want to sell that their house. This is a thing we actually do. It's terrible. It's not completely terrible, but it's 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 not the easiest thing. Uh, we do open houses, which I actually enjoy tremendously. That's basically where a house is open for a certain amount of time on Sundays, and I enjoy meeting new people. So that that's perfectly fine. Uh, calling expireds, calling people that are selling their houses themselves for sale by owners. What I'm doing is I'm just showing you the usual path for a real estate agent of how they establish their business. But I tend to be a person that kind of thinks outside the box. In fact, I'm not even, I don't even know where the box is. If someone tells me, well, here's how you do it. I say, well, we're going to throw that out and I'm going to create something totally different. I've always been that way. It's a problem. But anyway, so I'm an outside of the box thinker. And back when I was getting started in real estate in 2016, something was just getting traction and it was Facebook Live. Um, this was five years ago. This was six years ago where Facebook Live was kind of becoming a mainstream thing. And real estate agents, realtors were embracing it, but they were doing the typical stuff. They were doing a Facebook Live home tour, Facebook Live, open house, talking about the home buying process on Facebook Live. All of these things I did. And they actually worked pretty darn well. But I got to a point where I said, I think maybe I could do something a little bit better. And what I did was I basically said, I think what I need to do is I need to create a Facebook Live show that's on every week, same time, where I talk about something that has nothing to do with real estate and get to people, get to know people that way, get them to engage with me that way, let them get to know me that way. And I'll occasionally work in the fact that I'm a real estate agent. And if they ever want to buy or sell a house, they'll call me. So I sat down and I did the same list you guys are doing right now. I wrote down everything that I'm interested. I'm interested in canoeing. I'm interested in camping. I'm interested in reading, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And one of the things that I threw on the list was, well, I do enjoy history. Um, at that point, I didn't know that Elmira, New York is probably one of the greatest cities for history in America. I don't say that lightly. We've got a lot of stuff here going for us that put other cities to shame. Um, but I said, you know what? I'm going to try a local history show. And at that point, uh, I didn't even have a name for it. It was just basically me in August of 2017 
standing in front of the Brand Park pool in uh, on the south side. Uh, it's a Wesley Bins pool. There are only about 30 of them left in the United States. I did a live for about 20 minutes and 6,000 people watched it. And I said, all right, this is what I'm going to do. So since that point, more or less every single week, I am on for about 20 minutes talking about some historical site or museum that I'm interested in or that I'm passionate about. So here I am taking a walking tour of Woodlawn Cemetery. Um, that day I got 1,600 views, 85 comments, 65 shares, 86 likes. And this is the type of community engagement I wanted. And everybody wins. I get to do something I'm passionate about, which is learn a little bit about history. I mean, like I'm an amateur historian. I have no license. I mean, there is no licensing, but, you know, I'm very, you know, I learn it slightly ahead of when you learn it, basically. Um, but I, I do enjoy that process. People that watch me get to hear about a little bit of history and they also get to engage in nostalgia for their hometown. Because I'll tell you what, history is fine. Um, and doing a piece of Civil War history about Elmira is interesting. But you do something like Joy Crest Skating Rink, where you've got history, and then you've got nostalgia, and they come together. And that is very powerful. Um, just some other examples. Okay, so so once you put yourself out there, once you start making it known that you like to do this certain thing, opportunities open themselves up. So there was a period where I was actually doing these segments for uh, WBTM, and it was fantastic. And COVID put a stop to that as it did with a lot of things, but I definitely enjoyed my time doing that. Um, this is kind of an example of a hit it out of the park type of situation. Uh, this is me doing a 40 minute tour of the Zim house some Friday. Um, the Zim house is not really well known even in this area but it's really an amazing example of what a home from the 1890s would have looked like. Nothing has really changed since the 1890s. Uh, it was the, phone, the home of a very famous uh, illustrator and cartoonist. And, you know, again, this went great. 13,000 views, 71 comments, um, 125 likes. Lots of people reach out to me after the show on Facebook to say I really enjoyed it. They ask questions. I talk to them. And, and yes, I do get business from this. People who have seen me on the show, they do reach out and they say, hey, by the way, I need to buy a house or I need to sell a house. And that's great. But the thing I really like is you know, I get to talk to them about something I'm really passionate and interested in um, and not necessarily just about buying and selling houses. Um, so that's basically, you know, my story. So we've seen, you know, my example of how I took an interest and turned it into something larger. And we saw how Philomena Jack did the same thing with art. And we saw how Jim Pfeiffer did the exact same thing about the passion, um, his passion for the river. So now what you guys need to do is you need to make a list of the hobbies and interests that you have. And you need to decide um, which of those 
you want to start pouring time into, I should say a little more time, because if you are really passionate about them and you enjoy them, you're probably doing them already. You know, it could be, you know, it could be wood carving, it could be running, it could be fishing, it could be camping, it could be boating, whatever it is. What we need to start thinking about is, you know, number one, identify your hobbies and interests, make a long list. Number two, decide the way you're going to communicate that hobby or interest to the world. So this is really about, this is more about just you doing that thing by yourself. This is how do I share this with a larger audience? Because if I share it with a larger audience, not only am I going to get more satisfaction from that, and those people are going to benefit, but if I'm good at it at all, I'm probably going to get to do it more. And that's good because I really enjoy doing this thing. So if you are really passionate about hang gliding, let's pick something crazy. If you're really passionate about hang gliding, there's got to be a group you could get in front of and talk about hang gliding and maybe show some pictures or a video. They get to benefit from your knowledge, you get to share it with them, and you never know what the next thing in the cycle is going to be. Someone is gonna come up to you after the presentation and say, hey, listen, how do I get more information about this? And you tell them about the club you belong to and so on and so on. And then the third step, and this is an optional step, and this is a step that actually happens by itself, more or less. Again, if you have a career, if you have a business, you are now engaging future customers about something totally unrelated to the business. So this fictional hang gliding enthusiast that we have created, he is a plumber. And he is going to be, you know, speaking to a group, a room full of 30 people. And then a month later, he speaks to a room full of 60 people. And then a few months later, he has a club formed. Well, all of these people have toilets and these toilets are going to break. And if they know he is a plumber, business is going to flow his way. That's not the point. It can be. I was very intentional. It can happen by accident as well. But our careers, our business, our hobbies, the things we love, a lot of times they, we see them as two separate things. There's no reason on earth they can't go like this. Um, and you know, I'm planning to do this until I'm physically not able to do this anymore. So actually this week, I'm not going to be on Friday. I'm going to be on Saturday at 9 a.m. I'm going to be at a historic inn on Casanova Lake uh, in New York. And But then the next week, uh, I'm going to be going into the winter cycle. Everybody likes, see, likes seeing me uh, stand in very cold environments talking about history. So we've got that to look forward to. Uh, Philomena, she's going to continue doing her art and growing that. And although Jim is not the executive director of the River Friends anymore, he's still extremely active with them. He still organizes trips with them. And I talked to him last week and he's doing teaching now somewhere. I'm not sure specifically where, but he's actually teaching some classes. So, you know, what we focus on expands. And I just want you to do that um, with the things you're passionate about as well. That's pretty much it for me. That's all I had planned. Does anybody have any questions? You don't have to have any questions, but if you have any questions, 
I'd be happy to answer them. And I hope this has been helpful for you. I know, I know Susan had to leave, but I, I did have a comment um, to kind of add on to your sure. um, presentation. Um, a lot of people don't realize that you can also get paid to volunteer for your hobbies or your passions. Um, a lot of employers in the area offer um, paid leave during work hours to volunteer at various organizations. I know Shimon Canal does, Corning um, does, Corning Inc. Um, m and Bank does. Um, so you can also get paid to enjoy your hobbies. And there's a lot of great organizations within the, the area in Shimon County and surrounding counties to, uh, to volunteer hours with. Terrific, great. All right, well, listen, thank all of you so much. I really appreciate you are listening to me. I hope this was helpful uh, for some and or all of you. And um, best of luck. And if you ever need me for anything, please feel free to give me a call. All right, great, thank you. Uh, we will share great. the link uh, to the recording with everybody later on. You can also visit shamongchamber.org to register for other upcoming webinars or find recordings of previous webinars. For anyone interested in chamber membership, please contact the chamber at info at shamongchamber.org or call 607-734-5137. Many thanks to JD and Keller, Will Keller Williams Realty and to everyone for joining us today. Have a great day. All right. Bye-bye.